What's up guys, Adventures in Bitcoin here and I'm real excited to bring you this little mini course that I've been working on. A lot of people have been asking me to do something like this, a video that kind of explains technical analysis and some of the tools that I use to kind of figure out what the market's trying to do. I've called it market analysis and chart reading basics. It doesn't matter if you're a trader, if you're just buying and holding. It's good to get a basic understanding of why the market is doing what it's doing and how you can possibly benefit from it. This information is being provided for educational and entertainment purposes only. The information provided should not be considered financial advice. Always seek professional advice before participating in any trading or any investing. Okay, so here are some of the topics that we're going to cover. We're going to go over emotions and how they play into the markets and how they really have no place in trading. The importance of having a plan. The market's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go sideways. You need to have a plan for each scenario. That's going to lead us to Elliott Wave Principle and Elliott Wave Theory and how we're going to use that to figure out where the markets might be headed. Then we'll talk about market cycles and that's going to lead us to chart patterns, the common patterns that you'll see on a chart. We're going to talk about channels, how to draw them and how to use them to our advantage. And we're going to finish up with Fibonacci. Emotions, fear, and greed. They would drive human behavior and they would drive the markets. So there's about 14 stages of commonly accepted trading psychology. Starting with optimism, excitement, then thrill. Wow, I feel great about this investment. This is usually the stage where the media starts pumping something. Then the euphoria stage at the top. Then on the downslide, we have anxiety, denial, fear, desperation, panic, capitulation. Maybe the markets aren't for me. Maybe I should get out. Maybe I don't belong here. Then despondency, depression at the bottom, hope, relief, and then optimism as the markets turn around. And as you can see, if we swing over to the left, you can see the pattern starts over again. The important thing to note on this chart is at the very top, that is the greed phase, and at the very bottom, that is the fear phase. So at the very top is the point of maximum financial risk. This is where the smart money starts selling their positions, and at the bottom, that's the point of maximum financial opportunity. That's when the smart money starts accumulating positions. Here are the emotions laid out nicely on a chart so we can kind of see how they play into the markets. Starting with the left, we'll start with uh, hope as the markets start to rise, which leads to optimism. Uh, then belief, people start really getting invested in the market. More and more people are talking about it. Then thrill, people get a little too excited. They go, they start buying more on margin. They tell all their friends about it. Then the euphoria stage. Everyone thinks they're a genius. You can throw a dart at the wall and pick a cryptocurrency that's going to be successful or a stock that's going to be successful. Then when the markets turn around, as you can see here, it doesn't quite go down all the way. It bounces and goes sideways for a while. That leads to complacency because people look at that as, oh, it, it was going to go down, but it didn't. So there must be more to go higher. So that leads to complacency. People think it's just going to continue to rally. And when it doesn't, the anxiety sets in. And then denial when it bounces because people say, oh, there's no way it can go any further. People start to lie to themselves. They say, I'm in good companies. I have all great coins. They're all going to come back. I'll just hold on and everything's going to be fine. And when it doesn't, it leads to panic. Everybody sells. And then capitulation. People get 100% out of the markets, they can't afford to lose any more money, and they sell everything. Then after a while that leads to anger and finger pointing. Everyone wants to blame someone else for the decisions that they made. Blame the media, blame their friends, they blame the government, everyone but themselves. Then after a while, it leads to depression. My retirement money is lost, how are we going to pay for all this new stuff we bought? I'm an idiot. Why did I do this? Then when the market starts to turn around and we start to see it 
and we start to see some strength again, the disbelief kicks in and people say to themselves, it's a sucker's rally, you're not gonna sucker me in again, I'm not jumping on board. And if we swing over to the left, you can see this is just the beginning and these people miss an incredible opportunity as the market starts to rise again. Risk tolerance, this is something I talk about a lot. You always have to have the amount of money at risk for you, and that's gonna be different for everyone. Um, if you're constantly worrying about your investments, if you can't sleep at night, this is a good indicator that you're overextended and you have too much at risk. Dealing with loss, there's always gonna be a time when you're gonna be on the wrong side of a trade. Uh, we all do it. Sometimes you're gonna be a little bit overextended more than what you want it to be. And you need to realize at this time that it's not over. You need to think about all the things you did right and think about all the things you did wrong and how you're going to do them differently going forward. This way you don't put yourself more at risk. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. This is where you have to kind of develop and cultivate the attitude that you're not going to give up. You refuse to fail. Always have a plan. The question is not what the markets are going to do, it's what you're going to do when it happens. So if you have a plan for every scenario, then it takes a lot of stress off. Here's some examples, scenarios uh, in regards to the cryptocurrency markets that you should consider. So let's say Bitcoin is up and the altcoins are down. Now for most people, they may say, I'm going to sell Bitcoin and I'm going to buy altcoins now that they're cheap. Uh, it's going to be different for everyone, of course. And let's say the reverse is true. Alts are up and Bitcoin is down. So in that case, maybe you want to sell some alts and go back into Bitcoin. And you can easily exchange Bitcoin for Ethereum, Litecoin, whatever makes sense. Another scenario is everything is up. Now this might be a good opportunity to re-diversify your investments, limit your exposure, maybe sell, take some profits. Uh, and everything is down. Again, you might want to re-diversify, rethink your strategy, and uh, what your plan is going forward. The Elliott Wave Principle. Key to market behavior. Now, all the material that's in uh, Elliott Wave is going to come from this book here. Uh, there you go. Elliott Wave Principle from Frost and Pretcher. I had the good fortune to work for a company that did a lot of... Uh, uh, charting and educational material for technical analysis for stocks and futures markets and the information apply perfectly to cryptocurrency as well so I'm going to try to break it down and simplify it as best as I can uh, I do not understand the math in this book but I do understand how to use the Elliott Wave principle to get a better understanding of what the market's trying to do okay Ralph Nelson Elliott was an accountant in the 20s and he discovered that uh, the stock market moves in a predictable pattern. The reason for that is basically markets are made up from people and their emotions, buying and selling. And when you take it on a mass scale, you can easily see these emotions play out on a chart. He was able to predict pretty accurately where markets were headed, identify the cycles, and use it to make a ton of profit. This is the basic pattern that make up the Elliott wave and what Elliott discovered was usually markets move in a five movement pattern so starting at the bottom here we're gonna go one two three four five that's the direction that the markets heading it's bullish it's going up and then it's followed by a three movement correction so we see that as a B and C so it's gonna be one two three four five and then one two three again one two three four five one two three now at the top here you can see the pattern reverse now it's heading bearish so we count in the reverse direction so we go one two three four five then a b c correction and again one two three four five and then the cycle ends now if we zoom out a little bit we can see if we look at the the numbers in parentheses this is a one this is a two this is a three, this is a four, this is a five, with a three movement correction of A, B, and C. 
So if we zoom back a little bit further, we can see this is only the beginning because this is one, two. So the first leg of the Elliott wave. So it really doesn't matter pretty much if it's bullish or bearish. It matters where you're looking and what time frame you're looking at. This is the Elliott wave in a full market cycle. You can see the, the motive wave here telling us the direction the market's going. This is bullish, followed by the corrective wave, which is bearish. So you can see the pattern here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And we also have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and one, two. Okay, so there's a couple of rules that you have to follow when you're dealing with Elliott Wave. They're not many, but it helps you to identify the patterns a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm in trading view and I'm just gonna draw it out for you so you can see it. There's a tool here on the left. It's called Elliott Wave Impulse Wave. Elliott Impulse Wave, one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we're gonna start with. So this is a typical Elliott Wave. I'm not gonna draw it on a chart. I'm just gonna draw it in the free space here. So the first leg is gonna be up like this. And the second leg is gonna come down somewhere in between halfway of the first leg and the top. So right there is pretty typical. So I'm gonna mark that there by clicking it. And I'm gonna draw the third leg. Typically the third leg is gonna be longer than the first leg. Okay, see it's a little bit longer. And then the fourth leg is gonna be similar to two. And this could be anywhere as long as it's, it's, a, uh, it's coming down. And then the fifth leg can be anywhere. Sometimes it's higher than three. Sometimes it's, it's um, so the fifth leg can be anywhere between one, three, or even longer than three. All right, now I'm gonna change to the Elliott wave corrective wave. So I go to the same toolbar and I select Elliott correction wave ABC. And starting from five, I'm gonna draw the corrective zigzag. One, two, three. Okay, so that's how you would draw Elliott wave. So I'm gonna delete this for now. And we're gonna apply it to Bitcoin and try to see if we can figure out what's going on with Bitcoin. Okay, so follow along with me here. I'm gonna grab the tool. going to select Elite Impulse Wave and you always start at the bottom usually the beginning of a rally I can start from here I can start from here I can start from here I'm gonna start at the very very bottom because we want to get a long-term view of Bitcoin so I'm gonna mark zero there now I'm gonna skip this one because I don't like the way that this this doesn't this is not gonna give me a good two so if I mark this, that, that two doesn't look very Elliott Wave-ish to me. So I'm going to delete that. We're going to start over. We're going to put one here, followed by two. And three might be there, but you can see three isn't as long as one. We really want to go longer than one. So I'm going to make my three here, which makes more sense from an Elliott Wave perspective, following the rules. That's going to be four. And at the very top, we can't see it, but I'll mark it right here. Five. Okay, so that's the motive wave. And then we're going to follow that up with the corrective wave. So now I'm going to select the... Elliott correction wave, make sure you grab the right one. I always make this mistake. Grab the one that says ABC. So we're going to start at the top. A, B, C. Now this could be C. C may not be formed yet, so it's still trying to figure out what it's doing. So, all right, let's, let's say it's, let's say this is C. Okay, what this could imply is, if we move over a little bit, so if this is a full Elliott Wave cycle, 
there is a good chance that it's going to bounce here and go bullish again. So if I draw, if I go back to the Elliott impulse wave, there's a good chance it may do something like this. Continue on one, two, three. I can't go higher, but four, five. So I'll draw this a little higher. That's one scenario, okay? So another scenario is, now keep in mind two people can look at the same chart and see two completely different things. A lot of this is subjective. So what, what could we could be seeing here is, so I'm gonna grab our impulse wave again. So if this is, if this is turning bearish, this could be one. Well, this could be one. No, this could be one here. Two, three, four, and five could be down here. Followed by A, B, C. So this right here, this section right here, is really the ter determining factor how this is going to play out over the next couple of days. Here's a daily chart of Omise Go. So we're going to try to apply Elliott Wave to try to predict what it may do next. So we'll grab the Elliott Wave impulse wave starting at the bottom. Mark that as one. Mark this as two. three, four, five. Now sometimes the reason why this is five and that's not five because it's a very clear top. And sometimes uh, there's zigzags between let's say four and five and two and three. You'll find a zigzag or between one and two and three and four. So as long as you can see a clear bottom, you just ignore the zigzag. So now I'm gonna grab the corrective wave ABC and we could possibly be seeing A, B, and C and you can see if you zoom in it looks like it's turning around a little bit there so it is possible that this may be starting another Elliott wave another bullish Elliott wave so as you can see markets move in cycles there are bullish cycles and there are bearish cycles. What we're looking at here is a bullish cycle. Chart patterns. So there's a bunch of basic chart patterns that we see over and over again on the charts and they help us to identify what the market's trying to do. So you need to study the charts, look for the patterns, and try to develop chart vision. Triangles and channels. You'll see like when markets are either going up or going down, sometimes they consolidate into uh, triangles. Triangles can be symmetrical, they can be ascending, they can be descending. And the importance of triangles are they, uh, they tend to continue on in the direction they were coming from. So if the momentum was bullish, uh, once it heads into a triangle, at the very end of the triangle, you can see in this uh, one right here under the bull market symmetrical, you can see it's bouncing back and forth between these trend lines here. And then when it reaches the end of the triangle, it broke out back in the direction it was going. Here's a bearish one. So it was coming out of a bear trend, went into the triangle, bounced around, reached the end of the triangle where it got squeezed so much it couldn't go anymore, and then it broke out bearish again. Sometimes these are referred to as rising wedges, falling wedges, bull flags, or pendants, but they're all pretty much the same things and the same rules apply. Here's a silver chart from 1972 to 1978, a classic bull flag right here. You can see the, uh, the, the prices are squeezing, squeezing until they can't go anymore, almost to the end of the triangle, and finally breaks out. So here's um, Bitcoin. We're going to look for a triangle, a bullish triangle on Bitcoin. 
Uh, we're going to use the trend tool here, this little line, and we're going to find, here's a good one right here, there's actually two. So if I drew it out, it would look like this. Let's grab another one. Okay, there's one, and you can see as soon as it got squeezed, and then when it couldn't go anymore, it broke north, and then did it again. There you go. So you you'll see these over and over and over again. They don't always follow this rule always, but most of the time. Head and shoulders. Now, head and shoulders is a pattern that most likely indicates a reversal of the trend. So if it's coming out of a uptrend, when it's done forming the head and shoulders, it typically breaks bearish if it breaks through the neckline. So you can see clearly the left shoulder, the right shoulder. You can see the head goes above the two shoulders, and then you have a, a neckline. The neckline can either be ascending or descending. If it's descending, it's really, really bearish. So almost always look for more to the downside uh, if it has a descending neckline. And the reverse is true. Here's an inverse head and shoulders or reverse head and shoulders. You can see the shoulders now are upside down, the head's upside down. And this is coming out of a downtrend. And this is a signal that it's going to reverse or most likely will reverse after it breaks the uh, the neckline. Here's the head and shoulders applied to a chart. You can see the, the shoulder here, the head, the other shoulder, uh, and as you can see, kaboom, the price dropped as soon as it, it broke the neckline. And I pulled this off the internet, and what they're trying to say here is typically uh, the height of the head to the neckline, or the longest neckline in a descending uh, neckline, that is pretty you can expect it to fall at least that much. Okay, here's a perfect head and shoulders example looking at the Bitcoin chart. And how we'll identify that is with this uh, paintbrush tool here. And I'll just draw it out for you here. Here's the first shoulder. Let me make sure I have it. Not working. One, two, Three, and as you can see, once it broke the neckline, it went down. There's a neckline there. Sometimes they're hard to see, sometimes they're easy to see. You just have to develop the chart vision to see them. Here's another one. And this quite possibly could be a inverse head and shoulders here. You can see it reversed. It went bullish. Okay, so now I want to talk briefly about trend lines and how to use them to kind of time your positions. So uh, there's a trend line tool here, and what you want to do is just get familiar with using it. And it really doesn't matter how you use it in the beginning, but just try to connect the dots here. So I'm going to draw a bottom trend line. And the more points, all you need is two points to create a trend line. But the more points that touch the line, the more reinforced or more respected the line is by the price movement of the stock or the cryptocurrency. So there's a trend line there. So we can see like there's three points that touched. And as soon as that, uh, as soon as that price goes past the line that is something significant and it's something you should pay attention to because you can see this was in an upward trend until it broke the line and then it kind of went sideways you can also draw a trend line to the top side like so and when you do that you start to develop a channel so you can see that these the uh, the price is trading within a channel here and it's just bouncing off. The bottom line is considered, we call it support, because it's like a floor, it's supporting the price. 
and the top line is resistance so it's resisting going any higher and if it if it does break that line it's usually considered a breakout and it's significant and something to pay attention to because it may continue to go further because people you know you and I are not the only ones looking at the chart everyone's looking at these charts and they're all drawing these similar lines and we all see this happen at the same time so everyone's thinking pretty much the same thing and you can see sometimes when it when it breaks if it's if it's having a hard time break through breaking through a line and it finally breaks through the line everyone jumps on board now lastly I want to talk about moving averages uh, tradingview.com has these indicators that you can add uh, for free they think they give you two or three that you can use I'm using volume uh, moving average 13 and 34 and how you would add them is you click indicators type moving average and then select it from here and then you can configure it once it's up here on the left you can hit the settings cog here and tweak it. you can change the color change the uh, the length so I set mine to 13 and 34 because I want to have a slow moving average and a faster moving average to kind of give me an idea of where the price is headed short term and where it's headed long term and how we use them to our advantage is if I zoom out let's say we're just using Litecoin because it's here but when you see these moving averages cross that's where that's where the magic happens as you can see here when this crossed when the purple crossed the blue it went very bullish right and then when it crossed the other direction it went bearish you see that trying to find another one here's a good one this is telling you get out this is telling you get in so they're not always perfect all the time but they're a really strong indicator of when the price is going to turn around the other indicator I like to look at is volume usually big price swings happen on days where there's a lot of volume down here you can see these uh, these volume bars green means the buyers are there are more buyers and sellers and the red means there's more sellers and buyers affecting the price so if you see a big red bar that usually means a big red candle in the price and a big green bar means a big green ca candle in the price not always but most of the time and when the volume dries up and you have small bars here usually you have small price action Leonardo Fibonacci Fibonacci was a mathematician from the Middle Ages. He's probably the most renowned mathematician from that time. He discovered a sequence of numbers called the Fibonacci sequence, obviously named it after himself. And where this came from, and they must have been very bored in the Middle Ages, because there was a problem where they needed to figure out if they put two rabbits in a room and they put some Barry White music on how many rabbits would you have given a certain amount of time I don't understand why they needed to figure that out but I'm glad that they did because now we have the Fibonacci sequence and you'll see why it's significant in a minute so how it works is the first month you have one pair of rabbits right so it takes about a month for them to you know get busy so the second month you still have one pair the third month now they start having babies so now we have two pairs of rabbits so the following month now we have three pairs by the fifth month now the baby rabbits are approaching adulthood and they start you know so that leads to 8, 13, 21. Now we're moving now. We got 34 rabbits, then the next month, 55, 89, 144, and it just goes on and on and on and on. So Fibonacci was, was able to map this out mathematically. What makes this interesting is if you look at the numbers, if you add the number to the one next to it, you get the next number. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 13 is 21 and so on and so on so what they found is 
there was a ratio, a very predictable ratio between a number, any number, and the number next to it to the right or the number next to it to the left. So the ratio to the next higher number is 0.618 to 1. And the ratio to the next lower number is 1.618 to 1. Now here's where it gets interesting. Now I, I don't understand the math. I tried to read the book. I, it's beyond me. But what they came to find is this spiral, which is called the golden spiral. And it has to do with proportions. And proportions that seem perfect to the human eye. And what they began seeing was they were finding these numbers everywhere. Uh, even in our own DNA sequence, you can see these numbers. So like if you look at the human body, from uh, the feet to the navel is 1, and from the navel, the navel to the neck is 0.382, from the navel to the head is 0.618, and then from the neck to the head is 0.236, and to the hand outstretched from the head is 0.382. So these make up, these numbers and these ratios make up what uh, we determine to be visually aesthetically pleasing, as we can see in this building structure here. And then we start to see it in nature, in shells, in a snail shell. We see it, the proportions in a seahorse. We see it in a whirlpool, in hurricanes, in a pine cone, a ram's horn, a nautilus, ocean waves. These are quasi-crystal under electron microscope. Also has the Fibonacci golden spiral and even our own galaxy. So here's the Fibonacci spiral applied to the Elliott wave. Okay, Adventures in Bitcoin, this is all well and great. How do I use this to make money? Let's apply the ratios of Fibonacci to a chart. Okay, so here's a daily chart of Bitcoin and we're going to use the Fibonacci tool which is located here, these little pitchfork looking thing here. We're going to select Fibonacci retracement. There's a couple of Fibonacci tools, but I like Fibonacci retracement the best. So I'm going to select that one. And I'm going to come down to the bottom where the, uh, where the uptrend began. And I'm going to start to slowly raise my mouse. And you can see the ratio start to form. Now I'm going to take it all the way to the top of the peak here and you can see some of the prices start to line up so I'm gonna go ahead and click it to market and it'll stay All right. now every one of these lines is a significant ratio and if you can see the price action respects the lines so this uh, 0.786 line here it acted as resistance and it first bounced off it and then broke through it and when it broke through it you can see this wick just barely touched almost touched the top and then bounced but then came right back had a little resistance there and just kept on going broke through the green section very strong rally here broke th through into the red section and you can see the, the top Then, you know, we mark the top, it bounces off, and comes all the way down to this line here, very significant line. And it used that as a, re as a support, bounced off, and now we're back down to this support level here, this green support level here. So how do we use this to determine what's going to happen next? By looking at this, I can see in this green area here that it's most likely going to stay in this area here. If it does happen to break through into this blue section significantly, like it closes, not just the wick, but it actually closes on the day, then that's something to consider that it may head more bearish. So what mo most likely might happen is the price is going to come down to this line. and then start to bounce off of it and maybe trade in here and then hopefully break out again. 
So that's how you use Fibonacci tool to try to figure out what the market may do next. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a like. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, please leave a comment. Let me know you liked it. Feel free to share with your friends. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next video. Peace.